American muscle cars are known for their powerful engines, sleek designs, and high performance. But not all muscle cars are created equal. Some of them are downright ugly, with bizarre shapes and questionable features. In this video, we will look at eight of the ugliest American muscle cars ever made and why they failed to impress car enthusiasts. The word on the new cars from Chrysler Corporation. What's the word you hear? Lean is the word for Dodge. The new lean breed of Dodge for 62. The 1962 Dodge Dart was a mid-sized car that featured exaggerated fender trim lines and low, high headlight and taillight treatments. Its grille was a unique and daring experiment, but it was also a failure and a flop. It was swapped for a more regular and boring grill in 1963. The 1962 Dart was available in three trim levels and six body styles, and could be equipped with a range of engines, from the 145 horsepower Slant 6 to the 415 horsepower Max Wedge V8. The 1962 Dart was not a hit with customers, selling only 153,745 units a 44% plunge from the previous year. It was also slammed for its divisive design, which some called ugly or weird. The Dart was redesigned for 1963 with a more conventional and conservative look and became a compact car that competed with the Ford Falcon and Chevrolet Nova. Ford introduces Mustang II. The right car at the right time. The 1974 Ford Mustang II was a radical departure from the previous generation of Mustangs. The Mustang II was based on the Ford Pinto platform and was smaller, lighter, and more fuel efficient than its predecessor. However, many Mustang fans and critics were disappointed by the Mustang II's design, which they felt lacked the sporty and aggressive character of the original pony car. The shrouded headlights gave the car a bland and timid appearance. The lack of a fastback body style was replaced by a hatchback that looked more like a station wagon. Although commercially successful due to the oil crisis and the demand for smaller and cheaper cars. However, it also tarnished the reputation of the Mustang brand, and it is often considered one of the worst Mustangs ever made. Hey, Jeff. Come on over here for a second. What's up? Look in there. <laughs> pants! Oh, wow, a car with pants! The Gremlin looked like someone had cut off the back of the AMC Hornet and glued it on a weird tail. The car was named after the little monsters that like to mess with machines and make them break down. The Gremlin was a love-it-or-hate-it kind of car. Some people thought it was the ugliest thing on wheels. They mocked its appearance and compared it to a chopped-off sedan or a pregnant roller skater. Others thought it was cool and quirky. They liked its low price, roomy inside, and big trunk. The 75 Roadrunner was a big disappointment compared to its previous generation. It was based on the Fury Coupe that shared styling with the existing sedans. The critics and fans hated it, and they felt like it was a slap in the face to the Roadrunner legacy of being cheap, fast, and fun. The 75 Roadrunner was also slow as a snail, thanks to the emission rules and fuel shortage that choked its engines. The base 318 V8 was rated at only 145 horsepower, and the optional high-performance 404 barrel was down to 235 horsepower. The 75 Roadrunner was a far cry from the muscle car glory days of the late 60s and early 70s, when the Roadrunner was a formidable competitor on the street and the strip. The 1978 Dodge Challenger was a rebadged version of the Mitsubishi Galant Lambda, a compact coupe that had little in common with the original muscle car Challenger. 
The second-generation Challenger was smaller, lighter, and less powerful than its predecessor, with engines ranging from 1.6 to 2.6 liters and producing only 77 to 105 horsepower. The design was also less distinctive and sporty, with a notchback roofline, rectangular headlights, and bland colors. The interior featured plaid upholstery and a basic dashboard, lacking the flair and comfort of the first generation. Many critics and fans of the Challenger were disappointed by the drastic change in style and performance, and the 1978 model was soon forgotten by most. Cougar. More For the 1980s, Lincoln Mercury unleashes a striking new cat. The 1980 Mercury Cougar was part of the fifth generation of the Cougar, which thankfully only lasted from 1980 to 1982. It was shrunk and reshaped to please the market. However, enthusiasts felt that the new Cougar was too boxy, too bland, and too boring compared to its predecessors. The boxy and edgy design made the car look like it was drawn by a toddler. The Cougar also had a squishy vinyl roof, tiny windows, and a silly strip that made it look even more bloated. The huge and heavy bumpers made the car slow and clumsy and did not match the rest of the body. The Cougar underwent several changes and improvements in the following years, but it never regained the popularity and appeal of its predecessors. The 1986 Grand Prix 2 Plus 2 was a homologation special that Pontiac built to compete with Thunderbird in NASCAR races. However, the car's design was a disaster that made it look like a pregnant whale. The bubble rear window, which was supposed to reduce drag and lift, also greatly reduces the car's aesthetic appeal. The plastic front nose, which was supposed to improve aerodynamics, also looked cheap and out of place on the otherwise boxy vehicle. The engine, a 305 V8 with 165 horses, was underpowered and outdated compared to the competition. The result was a car that was neither attractive nor competitive, and only sold 1,225 units in 1986. The 1998 Chevrolet Camaro was a facelift of the fourth-generation model launched in 1993. It boasted remarkable performance and value, especially in the Z28 and SS trims, but it also had some design shortcomings that let down many reviewers and buyers. The front end was dull and generic, with a slim grille and tiny headlights. The rear end was messy, with a massive spoiler and a broad taillight bar. The sports appearance package added some aerodynamic features which seemed mismatched and overdone. Moving inside, the interior was gloomy, tight, and cheap-looking, with bad visibility and ergonomics. This car traded off aesthetics and functionality for performance and affordability, but it did not have enough personality or innovation to stand out from the crowd. 